Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be removing the steering wheel from my Jeep Liberty KJ, the 2002 to 2007. Plus we're going to change the clock spring, add some steering wheel controls, and upgrade the chrome cruise control buttons as well. How much is this going to cost? Well, this is actually not too bad, assuming you can find the parts at the salvage yard. $25 at the salvage yard, up to $330 new at the dealer. The buttons in the harness were free, or up to about $30 at a salvage yard. How long is this going to take? Well, assuming you don't have any problems and you have all of the right parts handy, this will take somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. Now, some of those parts include having all of the right tools, and there are a few tools that you're going to need to do this. You're going to need an 8mm socket plus an extension, a 13mm socket. You need a six-sided half-inch drive impact rated, and you'll see why, an adjustable wrench, a T20 torque screwdriver, and a 2-3 jaw gear puller, which you can rent those for free at an auto parts store. Now remember, I don't have any special skills, tools, or training. If I can do it, so can you. All right, so here's kind of an overview of what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna to need to remove the black steering wheel cover on the back there, and then we're gonna to need to remove the um, airbag itself and then pull the whole steering wheel off and that back black cover as well. And then we're gonna be replacing those cruise control buttons. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the battery and you need to leave this disconnected for at least 30 minutes to prevent accidental discharge of that airbag. Once we've got that done, now it's time to remove the airbag. That's where we use that eight millimeter and that small extension. And these are pretty easy to get out. In fact, you just need to turn it a couple times with a wrench and then you can uh, turn it by hand. And there's one on each side. Unfortunately, you're kind of blind doing it um, because the, uh, cause you can't really see there. So you gotta do it by feel. And once you get it started, uh, it's pretty easy to get going there. Then you just take the socket and extension off and uh, twist it by hand here. And there's a, a reverse view here or a, an under view that I'm going to show you that makes it a little bit easier to see what it's, what's going on there. And of course, I drop the bolt just like I always do. And uh, now the airbag is, is loose to come off. Now I'm going to be removing the cover over the steering column. This is where we use that Torx. And here's a, uh, a, the underside view of it. Now the issue that I had here is that the hole is much bigger than the actual screwdriver and the Torx head itself is also pretty small. So it's kind of a poke and hope situation here where you trying to find the right spot takes several attempts to get it but once you do and you can see him pulling apart there and then once they're all the way uh, all the way out then you can pull both of those off the top one comes off fairly easily those are the screws right there set those aside and remember where you put them and then the bottom you just take one side off and then the other I removed the from the driver's side to the passenger side um, it was just easier for me to do it that way but as long as you can get one side off and then the other, that's how you just kind of twist it off there. Now we're going to actually remove the airbag. So I just lean it forward here. The wires are pretty short, so I just tip it forward so that I have access and I can see everything. And we're going to be removing or disconnecting three wires here. The first one that I'm going to be removing is the horn that's the easiest one to do and the safest and again just a reminder make sure that you've had the battery disconnected for at least 30 minutes because the last thing you want is this to blow up in your face now i had a little bit of trouble in this part because i clipped my fingernails that morning and i didn't have a very good purchase with my fingers on those really small clips on the side there you can see me struggling I'm trying to go from one to the other and see what I can get, but I'm just 
having a little bit of difficulty there, but I finally get it here and I just kind of wiggle it around and get it to where one of them pops loose and then the other one's really easy after that. Then set the airbag off to the side. Now we're going to be removing the steering wheel and this was a challenge to say the least. So this is where we're using that 13 millimeter socket and you have to use a long extension on this to get over the steering wheel. Now this hasn't been removed since the factory so it's really hard uh, to try to get this off. Um, and uh, I'm trying as best as I can but not having a lot of luck there. A few moments later. So, let's try it with a mallet. Now, off camera, I actually use the mallet beating into it to um, to give it an impact that way. Kind of a poor man's impact wrench. And then I put it on there, and I'm trying to uh, hit the the turn to for it to go off. I've had a couple times at salvage yards where this trick worked, but it's not working here. A few moments later. Time to break out the bigger tools. So I break out my Black & Decker matrix with the impact driver attachment and I put it on there and I'm still not getting anywhere. In fact, things get a little smoky. So let's try something else. Well, one of the things I was having a problem with was getting a good grip on it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the buttons here, the cruise control buttons. And the reason I'm doing that is that allows that black plastic that's underneath there on the back side of the steering wheel to come loose from the clips. There's a couple clips there. And once that's loose, then I can actually grab the metal frame of the steering wheel. A few moments later. Now we're going to try it with the cheater bar, and I actually put three feet of, um, of electrical conduit on the end of it. And now you can see I'm trying to grab it, and I'm getting trying to get a better purchase on it, but it's still not working. So this is where it's helpful to have some friends with some big tools. I borrowed a Milwaukee uh, fuel impact driver and I was actually able to use that. That thing is uh, pretty awesome and if you can afford it, I highly recommend it. Now once you have that off and you can see as I mentioned there that I have the, the chrome buttons on there, it's because I forgot to film this part originally. So I wanted to get it on camera so I took it off again just to show it. Because this is kind of a complicated part here. This is where you use that jaw puller and you use the same driver that you did to take off that nut originally and you just put it on the end there and you make sure that the the jaws are clamped on the either side there. Uh, Jeep in their infinite wisdom decided not to have a standard um, steering wheel removal method and you have to use this. Then I put a sacrificial 10 millimeter nut on the end to give it some purchase and you just tighten it down and there'll be a pop and once that's there you can turn it a little bit more and then you can then loosen it up, remove the puller, and then you can pull it off the rest of the way by hand. And then you just need to feed those wires carefully through there. Now. It's been 15 years since anything has been seen in this area, so I'm just gonna take a moment here to clean it all up. Just spray a little simple green on there and clean it all up. Make sure that there's all the dust and um, accumulation from uh, road grime and and atmospheric problems have uh, gotten taken care of there. Then it's time to put it all back on. So I assembled it partially. I put the um, clock spring back on and then that's that back piece that I picked up from the junkyard with the volume control buttons and then as one I just slide it on there and it just kind of hangs there and I hold it and I'm gonna get the steering wheel to also hold it in place the idea here is to get the steering wheel it, you're obviously not gonna be able to get it on all the way 
but you just need to get it on there part of the way. And fortunately, steering wheel is keyed, so it can only go on one way. You don't have to worry about um, screwing up the, the angle of your steering wheel on there. It only goes on one way. So once you've got that on there, then you can grab that same bolt and put it back in there and do not torque it back on. Uh, there's no reason for that thing to be torqued on there so hard that you need to use a $300 torque driver to get it off. Um, so then you can just put that screw back in there, that bolt back in there, and once it rests up against the steering wheel frame, then you'll feel it start to slide on and it will get to a point where it won't slide any further. Once it gets to that point, you know you are fully seated. Then you can snap that back cover back into place, which you can see those clips right there. And then you're going to want to work on the buttons um, because we've gotten the um, we've gotten the buttons, or I've got the first button on there already. And you'll see a little trick that I did there. I turned it backwards or turned it the wrong way just a little bit, just to make sure that the I'm not threading this or cross-threading the screws in there. The last thing I want to do is cross-thread the screws, so I just turn it backwards as a little trick I learned. And also when you're putting those buttons in there, there's in that that frame there, there's a couple little tabs that need to go underneath the leather. And it will get to a point where you can then screw in the screw and everything is lined up and locked into place. Then just reattach all of those cables. Now we're gonna put the steering or the the uh, airbag back on, and so you just kind of take it or do it in reverse. Um, I try to do it that way, but that's not gonna work. You're gonna need to actually do the airbag ones because those are the shortest buttons, and those airbag um, wires are keyed, so they only go in one way. Just make sure to tuck the excess back in, set it in place. Then we've got the wires to connect up to the clock spring underneath. And again, these are keyed. There's only, you can only put it into one and you're kind of doing it blind here. So, which is what I was doing. So you just got to put it in there until one of them fits and they click. Then we're going to put the steering column shroud back on. And I put the top on first because it gives some place to align for the bottom. And then I put the bottom it back on in reverse from the way that I uh, took it off. So since I s had it so that it came off of the um, the key side um, last, that's what I put it on first. I put it on the key side first, and then I just slide it in, and you'll s have it click. And there's actually some clips in there that or that line it up so that you know when it's all in place, and then have it held in place there and then you get your screws out and your Torx driver again which you collect from the safe place that you kept and this is just as frustrating to get on if not more frustrating than it was to uh, to take off because now you are trying to get a screw up into that narrow or sorry into that wider than the screw spot and uh, of course I drop a screw just like I do all the all all the time, I drop at least one screw. Um, but once you get it into the hole, and it's it's you'll feel it. You, this is one of those things that you have to just do by feel. And then uh, I'm pinching it there, which is why my arm is in front of the camera. But once it's pinched, um, that'll help a little bit. And then you'll feel it bite. And then once you feel it bite, then you can start turning it and get it secured. All right. Now that everything is connected back up, now we need to give it a test. So we're going to reconnect the battery. And for me, I actually had to start my Jeep a couple times here, which means that I unlocked it with the key. Um, and when you unlock it with the key, with the uh, without the key fob, the alarm goes off. I was a little bit startled on that one. Um, but uh, uh, it makes sense, so you just hop in, throw the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position, and then once it's in the on position, you get a chance to test things out. So 
as you can see, the uh, steering wheel has been turned, um, and that's because, again, I, I had to turn it on and off. So I just turn the radio on, and I'm going to test it out to see whether or not it's working. So uh, turn it on, set it over to a station, and play with the volume and the channel change buttons. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but hopefully you can hear some of the changing. With a gig of high speed data. There's nothing like hanging out with my friends on Diamond Tuesdays at the Sasquatch Casino. I love Tuesdays too. Alright, that's it. If you can get past the steering wheel part, it's pretty easy after that. Um, and it's a really good mod to be able to add to your Jeep to add some functionality if you have a radio that supports steering wheel control. Or if you want to add the chrome trim on there like I wanted to do both on there. Thanks for watching everybody.